did you get that? Are you? Oh, perfect. Got it. All right. Um, thank you. Do you guys want to kick it off? All right. Hmm. Anticipation. Oh, I think this is my, I know this joke. Anybody want to hear a dad joke? We're going to kick this off with a dad joke. Go for okay. It. What do polar bears like to get at Taco Bell? That's what do polar bears <laughs> like to get at Taco Bell? They get burritos. That's burritos, folks. That's what they get. I can't tell if you're telling jokes or we're playing bingo here. Can you... <laughs> Either one. I and then, both. as that was great, Ron. Um, but yeah, what kind thanks. of what kind of ice cream is a polar bear's favorite? Oh. A blizzard. Oh, very <laughs> funny, Chris. Ah, uh, shoot. Hopefully everyone enjoyed that. That's the best thing that you're going to see at this town hall. I'm just throwing <laughs> that out there. All right. Oops. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and kick it off. And really quick, I will just run through the agenda. Um, Ron is going to give us a reorg and some space updates. Catherine is also going to talk about some space planning efforts at DSB. Jeff is going to roll into Kellogg admin building remodel updates. Aaron will be talking about budget. Catherine will be providing an update on the records management system project. And Akiko will be providing um, an update on behalf of the green team. And then Galen will be sharing his life outside of West. So um, we have a pretty full agenda today. And um, I just want to take one moment of pause to thank the amazing administrative professional staff as today is Admin Professionals Day and just say uh, we have a really amazing group of folks here at West. And then uh, before we kick off into the formal agenda, I will pass the meeting over to Greg for his opening remarks. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, hi, everybody. Great to see so many smiling faces. Uh, I do have, there's a lot going on. Um, so I'm just going to tick through these, the list here. Uh, we've got a bunch of capital projects going on. Um, the outfall, we're actually moving dirt there. They're working on the, the shaft. So that's awesome. Um, uh, the Intertie 2 project should be out to bid uh, next month. So that'll be adding a 30 inch force main alongside of our existing 20 inch from our Intertie 2 pump station um, down to the Tri-City facility, which will accommodate future growth in Happy Valley for decades. So that's that's a big one. Uh, along with that, we're in design um, on the new Influent pump station. We're, we'll be adding some capacity there as well. Uh, that's kind of, yeah, it's a very vintage equipment there in our in current Influent pump station. So it'll be nice to get that upgraded to modern standards. And then the Kellogg uh, administration building remodel uh, is in near final design. We're actually out going to be talking to the final touches from the neighborhood uh, association on landscaping and things associated with that. So that's also very close. That's, that's going to be exciting. That That's long overdue and much deserved for the team there at Kellogg. Uh, if you're on the Red Soils campus, you'll notice uh, there's going to be 18 emergency phone stations, the tall blue towers that you're seeing. Um, uh, there's been three that have been activated. So um, just know that they're there. Uh, you touch the button and it calls 911. Um, and again, it's just the county's increased uh, safety measures, especially now that the courthouse is um, uh, coming along. And speaking of the courthouse, I was told the other day that um, there will be an additional 700 parking spaces on the Red Soils campus uh, when the, the, the courthouse is done. I know there's been a lot of, uh, I mean, the parking lots up here are full every day. <laughs> Uh, without the courthouse. So um, hopefully that'll be enough, but know that there will be more. Um, oh, and then the downed tree. So we had a good item on uh, good news for in front of the board. Uh, was that this week or last week? Uh, recently. Um, and we got an email and this is thanks to, to Kyle's crew, the line crew. Um, and here's the email. I'll just read it short. 
Uh, we just want to thank you and your wonderful work crews for the prompt and efficient cleanup they did to cut up and remove the fallen tree from our backyard. They also removed a number of other trees growing in the water detention facility that were deemed unhealthy or otherwise undesirable, such as cottonwoods and, the, and locusts that, quote, volunteered and were invasive species. Yesterday, another crew repaired the damaged fence. You'd never know anything had happened. Thank you again. And the woman's name is Barbara. So uh, awesome customer service um, and a great job. So thank you all. Um, oh, some not so great news. So at the last town hall, I talked about our Three Creeks project and that we got a three and a half million dollar grant um, on top of our uh, close to four current three and a half or four million dollar budget for that project uh, from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. It took, I think, close to two years from the time that we applied for that grant to when they awarded it to us. Um, and by that time, the design of the project was pretty well underway. Um, anyway, so we went back to them and had a conversation about what we would use those grant dollars for. Um, and in some ways, it was kind of uh, gilding the lily, as they say. Um, sometimes you can do too much restoration on a site. Uh, and we certainly didn't want to do that. We wanted to hit it just right. And anyway, they they packed up and walked away. So uh, it was kind of an all or nothing thing for them. And so we didn't get the money, which is super disappointing. It's no, no okay. reflection on on Wes or our staff, it's it's more a reflection on a federal bureaucracy. Um, and they just didn't wanna be bothered with actually scrutinizing it and maybe awarding 2 million instead of the three and a half. So anyway, super annoying, but um, we're still gonna move it along with the project and it's still gonna be great at the end of the day. Um, you also, there's a cybersecurity project. You, I, I'm reading in the newspaper almost daily about uh, well, Clackamas Community College, Oregon City, there was a water utility just today uh, that was in the news back east that was suffered a, 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 an attack. Um, so we're doing uh, what they're called network penetration testing um, from, well, started on the 22nd through June 14th. So uh, thankfully, the county and their IT department is trying to get on this. I wouldn't say ahead of it because we're certainly not. Uh, but at least we're addressing the issue and, and Wes is part of that effort. So um, I'll sleep a little better at night. Uh, our summer waterways cleanup series with Solve kicks off May 9th from 10 to noon at Meldrum Bar. Uh, registration apparently is required. And if you're interested, please speak to your supervisor about attending. Uh, I'd love to have you. And, and for supervisors, please, uh, uh, if at all possible, um, uh, support our staff attending that event. Uh, we have two new business partners. Uh, Kayla Curtin is our new class and comp partner with HR. And then uh, Samantha, I think she goes by Sam Pryor, is our new community relations specialist. So uh, Ed Nieto moved uh, to a different, is supporting a different department. I think, I think social services, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, anyway, so Kayla uh, or Samantha, is uh, gonna be our new, our new go-to person. So it'll be her and Ed from PGA along with Alexa uh, in-house. Um, all right, uh, let's pull up the slides. And uh, here's our new employees. Wow, Alexa's, it's so weird, Alexa. I, I, I work with Alexa every day. So um, it seems like she's been here longer than I guess she has. But yeah, uh, Justin, Alexa, Andre, Jamie and Ryan, um, and then congrats to Terrence on his in his new role, um, and then Sean Wells. I just did an exit interview with him yesterday. I don't know if oh he's not on the call today because he's got jury duty. Um, but yeah, he's moving over, taking a promotion over at uh, uh, social services as well. Uh, he's been great. He's a lot of fun, and I'm gonna miss him. Uh, I hopefully you know sometimes I sometimes. People are ready for opportunities before organizations are ready to offer them, um, and I think that's the case with Sean. And hopefully down the road we will he we will have an opportunity uh, to get him back. Uh, what else? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and the other thing. I, so Ron, Ron, and I do um, new employee orientations, and at the last one, Ron said something that really. Um, I found really meaningful. And at the end, he said, you know, we know that you folks have a choice uh, on where you go to work. And thank you for choosing Wes. 
And, and I, I agree with that 100%. Um, thank you. Thank you for choosing Wes. And we want to do everything we can uh, to, to, well, we attracted you. Now we need to retain you. And that means supporting you with training and support in so many other ways. So um, we intend to do that. And again, thank you for choosing Wes. Um, oh, and the other thing that we recently started doing. So um, our five-year anniversary well okay well, first congratulations nathan and scott matt kevin manny and Catherine. um so we're going to start doing a hundred dollar uh gift card or um uh west logo item so a hundred dollar credit for uh west logo gear um at each of those milestone years um and that's it uh i guess we can move on thank you all right, thank you. Next up will be Ron. Oh, hang, on, hang on a quick second. There are a couple couple of items. So I'll send an email to all the folks um, about who were um, part of the anniversaries. And then just wanted to highlight that May 8th, coming up quickly, is our 50th anniversary celebration for Kellogg. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I look forward to having everybody um, join us. Uh, Parking will be limited, so carpooling is encouraged highly. <laughs> and then also wanted yep. to highlight that our summer event is a little later uh, in the summer than we usually do, but we are going to be having the um, Clackamole launch in July. So to kind of spread things out, spread the fun out a little bit, we're going to have our summer event on August 14th at Tri-City, and it certainly will be a good time. And Chris, thank you for coming up with that 50th logo thing. That's pretty cool. All right. Okay. Uh, next up will be Ron covering information about reorganization efforts and some updates to the Tri-City Lab. Thanks, Lauren. Um, yeah, I was asked to uh, talk for a few minutes about some of the recent changes um, to our organization that we've made and or are in the process of making. So um, we'll do that now. Next slide. So yeah, I thought I'd start talking a little bit about what really what is organizational development and why even change an organization. Um, the first thing I want to touch on is, is Greg's philosophy. I think that we've all heard, um, you know, the West is a learning organization. We're continually trying to get better at what we do. And that's not limited to our procedures and equipment and kind of the how we do things. That's That includes how we're organized, how we're structured, how we're built in order to do the things that we need to do. Um, secondly, organizational development really is innovation at its heart. And as you can see here on the quote on the slide, innovation is change that unlocks new value. That's what we're really looking for. We're not looking for change for change's sake. Um, we're looking for new value in the organization. And so what really drives that change? Um, there's a few things. Uh, one, um, significant events or changes in business practices um, really provides an opportunity to take stock of current resources and needs and make sure that, you know, before we transition in the next phase of whatever the next phase is, do we want to take the opportunity now to make that change? Um, those significant events really do change the things we do and why we do them. Those can be transitions of staff to other places, transitions in leadership. Um, they can be organizational changes like Wes went through back in 2017, 18 timeframe. You know, we, really, we really need to just make sure we're not entrenched in how we've always done things. Um, and so those can be real drivers of organizational change. Another one is performance. Um, you know, in order to, to get better performance, sometimes aligning people and, and systems for increased collaboration, um, finding out where there's potentially overlap in services or overlap in work and, and taking a hard look at um, who works with who in the organization. We sometimes have programs that, you know, that, that are that are composed of people that don't actually work together and they work more with other people or other organizations, other, other programs in the organization. And so uh, that can really be something we're after as well is that alignment. There, there's a couple of recent examples of changes in that alignment that we've already done. One is the movement of purchasing 
um, internal West purchasing to our finance group, really recognizing that things like contracts and IGAs and grants and stuff like that, um, those acquisitions uh, and those tools are truly financial documents. And we are realizing um, some some value there already. And then the move uh, to, to the, the look at how we do our collection system um, pump station maintenance and work and and that realignment within operations is something that Matt does. And, you know, it's not always under the banner of reorg. Sometimes it's just a change on the fly. Um, and, and we're certainly supportive of that. Um, performance is tied to our, our business plan and our strategic plan. So we need to make sure that we're properly organized and well organized to achieve those targets. Um, and we have a lot of targets to try and achieve in our in our new strategic plan. The last one is is opportunities for efficiencies and cost savings. Really, um, efficiencies being things like shared management systems, like you can use managers for multiple groups or use staff for multiple things, or those can be information systems or software or other types of systems where groups may use different tools, and if we bring them together, they can use the same tools. So there's certainly some efficiencies and cost savings there, and also if if you reduce redundancies, um, there's efficiencies there. Next slide. So this is how we're organized like last fiscal year. You're all familiar um, familiar with the organization. 11 programs um, organized under four divisions. Two of the divisions managed by me, environmental services and business services, and the others by Jeff and Matt under Greg's leadership. Um, all of us are aligned under Greg as the district director uh, and Gary Schmidt as the district administrator and the county commissioners acting in their capacity as our district board of direction uh board of directors so what changes are we at actually implementing now next slide please you'll see on this oh um whoa that's weird it seems to happen when i give presentations i don't know how that got in there uh next slide please there we go so our organization uh it's uh what are we what are we proposing um what are we proposing working on um the orange boxes in in this in this this chart uh, identify the the movement of programs within divisions. That's what we that's what we're working on now, um, within with among our divisions. I guess I should say not within divisions. And there's two of those changes. One is resource recovery moving under environmental services. Um, that's really driven by a change in business practices for the resource recovery program, uh, making the program. Uh, a lot more about planning and policy and regulatory affairs than operations and being better and, and all of that work being better aligned with environmental services than it really is with operations. That means Terrence and Catherine McKnight and our biosol, our new biosolids technician move over to environmental services. Um, and from an efficiency standpoint, that allows us to use Terrence's vacant supervisor position um, to manage not only elements of our resource recovery program, but elements of other programs like our industrial wastewater work and our watershed protection work, prim primarily our pollution prevention stuff. Um, this is a great example of improving performance by aligning people and systems. We remove the divide that's been there for a long time between wastewater and surface water for our pollution prevention inspection and enforcement uh, work and tools. And now we have everybody doing um, everybody doing that same work is now on the same team using the same tools to protect our systems, public health and the environment. That means Krista Zavarati, Jim, Matt, Zach, Victoria, Galen, uh, and Rob Livingston are all, all working um, together. Um, and we are realizing value there for sure. Um, within environmental services, you can see uh, we still have permits in that in the division. And so Don, Don Kemp and his group stay with me for now. And also our surface water capital work or the work that Leah Johansson and Gail Shalom do uh, stays there as well. Um, the other change in asset management with mass transition to operations, we've taken a new look um, at the alignment of our asset management group. We've we've done a lot of listening to folks on the services received during that transition. We've and we've heard um, that our asset management group is better aligned. The work they do is better aligned with management op of operations. Um, so that we made we made the change and made the move there while we have a vacant. Uh, management position of, of that program. It's a great time to make it. The program still serves the whole department, just like it did from capital. It just lives in a new place now. Um, and that we're still working on, on that one in particular. So more to come on that. And I'll note one other change down in the bottom left where it says external affairs. It's not on this chart, but 
Um, we've moved our external affairs or utility relations work out of business services and under Greg um, directly instead of me. That's really a change precipitated by um, Shelly's retirement and a shift in our future utility re relations work to better align with our strategic plan and make sure we're in the best position we can be to, to maintain our, our strong partnerships as a regional utility. Next slide. So what's next? Uh, next we go fishing. No, um, seriously, when when we, there's a few things that we're working on that that will you know help us continue to to examine our organization. One is our workforce plan. Um, Lauren and Catherine Kraft are leading our leading the charge on our 2025 uh, workforce plan. That could certainly result in some recommended organizational acts uh, actions to fill critical gaps, um, or also some some potential changes in positions, whether it's where they work or or whether those are new positions to make sure we can get our work done. Um, we're also tracking key retirements um, or potential retirements and key positions, I guess I should say, planning on how to address that significant change when the time comes. Um, so you can see that stuff in our workforce planning efforts as well. And we'll and we'll we'll uh we'll make sure we we take a hard look at what we're doing when when the time comes, I guess I should say. Um we're also continually looking at ways to meet the targets in our current strategic plan. Like I said, we have a lot of things we're trying to achieve under our overarching strategies and goals. And, and we're already thinking about our next strategic plan. And, and, and Aaron's done a lot of work on getting us to the point where we can implement the current strategic plan. And she and I are already talking about the next one. It's right around the corner. Um, and so that that certainly drives innovation for us as a department and particularly in our in our organizational structure. And the last thing I would say too is, um, you know, I'm one that's fascinated by ideas, constantly thinking about um, the things we do and how we do them. So if you have an idea or you have a thought or a question, then certainly feel free to um, come to me, um, tell me your idea, we can talk about it, I'd love to hear it. And that's all I was gonna say. All right, thank you. Um, next. Thank you. All right, next we'll roll into updates on the DSB uh, space planning. Before I pass it to Catherine, um, I'd like to let folks know if you haven't heard already that some of the TS services have relocated to the DSB building. In fact, some of them have moved into the space on the fourth floor right next to the West Suite. Um, it's exciting to have TS so close. However, they have reminded us um, that they are still by appointment only. So the process prior to seeing them has not changed and they'll let you know what location to visit if you need in-person services. So please still submit a service ticket or call if you need more immediate support, but they are closer. Um, and then next I'd like to introduce Catherine who is our department project manager. She has only been here a little over six months, but has already jumped right into several important projects for us. And you'll get to hear from her twice a day with some updates on some of the stuff she's working on. So first up, she will be talking about space planning at DSB. Yeah, so for um, those of you who don't know, the, the DSB floor that we're on, we have sort of two sides of one part of the office. Um, and there are a lot of empty desks, a lot of people that are not, you know, due to work from home, um, we're just kind of spread out all around the office. And there is an opportunity for us to sort of condense ourselves on one side. The, Mountain View said I'm in Ron's office right now, um, but the side of the office that um, has the lovely Mountain View, we're going to try to see if we can get everybody to fit over here. So you can go to the next slide, Lori. Um, you know, I guess you can probably already predict what the goals of this project are, but I thought I would just highlight a couple. Um, there's an opportunity for cost savings. If we can rent out one side of this um, office, that would be really a really good opportunity for Wes to save some money on rent. Um, and then obviously increased ease of in-office collaboration. Um, sometimes when I'm here, there are tons of people here and I don't even realize it um, until we do stuff like today and they're over in the um, conference room and they're all gathered together. So it's just a nice opportunity to have um, in-office collaboration. Um, also, what part of what part of this project um, is related to what I'm going to be talking about later, um, but due to needing extra space, if we if we do end up um, condensing on the side of the office, um, it's requiring us to go through all of our documents that we have um, physical copies of and make those a little bit more organized, which would be a um, net benefit for everybody being able to find what they need. Um, so that would be just a nice improvement. Everything will have a home. Everything will know where you'll, everyone will know where to put all the things they need. Um, so next slide. 
This is um, our project timeline, which is a little um, up in the air just because we haven't nailed down the exact date that this is happening. Um, but Lauren and I did meet with the facilities people um, They came out to the um, office last week and we chatted with them and just sort of discussed what we needed from this project. And it does sound like this is definitely a possibility. Um, as far as timeline, we don't know that for sure. Um, next steps are just to have them come out and kind of, I, I created a little mock-up, um, obviously, that it was not to scale, but I sort of shared that with them and they were like, yeah, this is totally possible. Um, so it basically just looks like very similar to what the office looks like now, except down kind of towards the end, um, towards like the front of the office. Um, there'll be sort of a, a gathering space, I suppose, with maybe some walkers for people that need to store their stuff or maybe like a couch where you can sit and chat with somebody. Um, we are also cognizant of the fact that people need a silent space to work. Um, so we're also gonna have, obviously we have, um, breakout rooms that you can use. And then we have hoteling stations on this new plan where if you primarily work from home, but you want to come in, you will have somewhere to um, sit for the day. And then um, also using the um, records room that is currently overflowing with physical records, um, spilling into the office part of that, we're hoping to use that office part as sort of like a quieter hoteling station. Um, so stay tuned for date updates. I don't have any right this second, but I will Obviously, Ron will be in the loop and Lauren will be in the loop. So if you have questions, you can reach out to any of us. Um, and that's all I have to say on that. All right. Thank you. Um, next up will be Jeff covering the Kellogg admin remodel update. Thanks, Lauren. I see we're a few minutes behind. And so I'll go relatively quickly through my slides, but um, just talk about the really cool admin remodel project we have that we're underway on. Greg mentioned it earlier. Next slide. So a little bit on the background. So the admin building was constructed in 1974. There's been one kind of renovation to it that I'm aware of between 74 and now. And so in 2020, we kicked off a conceptual design for both the Kellogg facility and the Tri-City facility at the same time. Um, and um, that was completed in 2021. Um, the original intention was to per do the Tri-City admin remodel first. Um, because of some uh, movement we need to have around the garage of the larger vehicles, we have to figure out the, where we're going to put those because the plan, that concept plan lays out expanding into that space. Um, we decided to do the Kellogg First, um, it kind of ties nicely to a solids project we have in the plans in the future at Kellogg. And so part of the driver for this project is to also relocate some of the existing locker rooms and lunch rooms and laundry in the back part of the plant, bring those up to the admin building for to accommodate that future project. Um, the design, I'll show you a floor plan here in a minute. It does include a small conference room slash meeting space where we could host some smaller public meetings. And we're really trying to hone in on um, delivering this project with a real collaborative approach, lots of workshops with the uh, uh, staff at Kellogg and lots of collaboration from that standpoint around the fits and finishes of the spaces to make sure that our staff gets um, what, what they would like within the constraints of the building that we have. Uh, next slide. So this is just an overview. The main entrance there is between bubbles E and F and I can't point, sorry. Um, but anyway, so that's the that's the same entrance that we have now. And if you're familiar, you walk in and there's some office space to the left. And then you get into this lab and the lab is much bigger than we really need for what we do at the Kellogg lab. So we're going to shrink the lab down and convert the extra space into operators offices. Um, we're going to bump the building out, that conference room and lunchroom. That, that's an expansion of the existing footprint to have a nice space that's the community meeting space as well that divider in the middle can can be moved out of the way and then on the far end will be locker rooms and so that's i think been the biggest point of conversation is making sure that we have space for all of the gear and supplies and and showers and meet today's building codes there's new codes today than there were in the 70s um and to make sure that we have have space for folks um and to keep um public traffic out of our um, locker room space. There's an independent bathroom there as well. So the, you know, if, if somebody's at a meeting and doesn't, uh, they don't have to go into our locker rooms to use the, the restroom. Um, so, and then the next slide I have is 
about the schedule. And so we're under design right now. They're heading towards a 60% design. Um, and the anticipation is to bid this project at the by the end of the year. So out for bid in November, December time period and construction starting after the first of the year and about a nine to 10 month construction window. And so the goal at this point, uh, barring any setbacks would be to have our new new facility up and running by the end of October in 2025. Um, one nuance that's going to be uh, um, a definite impact is, you know, we're turning this entire building over. It's not something where we're doing renovations while we're occupying. So we're currently working on space planning for relocating folks and um, meetings are coming up to talk about what's in that building and how we need to pull that stuff out. Basically, we need to turn it over as if they were moving out of the building. So, uh, but very exciting. And, you know, basically 18 months, we'll, we'll have a whole new Kellogg admin facility. And then the next slide. So these are just some renderings. Um, the photo on the left is a rendering of what the space will look like. That big glass window area on the left side of the picture, that's the, it's the new conference room and lunchroom space. That so should be a nice, um, I don't know, picturesque, I guess I'll say, or, you know, there'll be a lot of natural daylight place to come and enjoy your lunch. Um, and then on the right is an example of the finishes we're looking for. There's a lot of nice wood finishes in the building and that are covered up by crappy drop ceilings that were, um, and so we're hoping to open up the space and have a little bit taller ceilings and re-expose some of that wood that's buried um, back underneath those uh, ugly looking ceiling tiles. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I think Amy and Devin are kind of the the lead coordinators at Kellogg and myself and Nathan from the capital group. So feel free to reach out to myself or Nathan if there's any questions, but we're really excited that uh, we're moving it forward and that's it. All right, thank you. Next up is Aaron with budget. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm excited to be sharing an update on our budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, next slide, please. The West is legally required to adopt the budget before we can spend any money in the new fiscal year under Oregon state uh, local budget law. But beyond that, the budget serves as an important tool for governance and communication of our objectives to our stakeholders. Uh, most importantly, the budget serves as a way to communicate how we use ratepayer dollars and invite citizen involvement to ensure that the way we allocate resources is aligned with our community's values. Next slide, please. The budget process takes about six months. It runs from January to June of each year, every year. We just reached a major milestone in this year's uh, budget development with completion of the development phase and are preparing to release the budget document into the wild later this week. Uh, so we'll be moving into the public process where we engage with the budget committee, the advisory committee, and then with the board in June. Next slide, please. So although the budget active budgeting process only encompasses six months out of the year, the inputs to the budget are the result of ongoing long-term planning efforts. In December 2023, Wes adopted our strategic plan, and that the budget is the main tool for funding the initiatives in that plan, including things like the Workforce Plan Initiative and others. Uh, Wes has a $260 million five-year capital improvement plan, and the budget uses year one of that plan as the basis for the capital spending. Uh, we maintain a 10-year long-term financial plan that provides a, a view of our financial position and resulting rates. Objectives under that long-term plan inform, uh, ensure that we have the funding for necessary capital investment and ongoing operations while keeping rate increases for our ratepayers steady and predictable. And then we look to economic forecasts for um, clues into operating cost increases as a basis for increases in our SDCs and for service area growth estimates. Next slide, please. So major themes for this upcoming budget include increased spending per capital in alignment with the adopted CIP, and that will address aging infrastructure, uh, replacing a lot of the infrastructure at our plants, which were mostly built in the 70s and 80s, uh, as you saw, as well as uh, accommodating service area growth by increasing capacity. We added two new engineering positions in the current fiscal year to support West's capital planning work, and no new positions are proposed for the next budget. Uh, inflationary pressures have eased quite a bit since the highs that we saw in 2022, but we're seeing pretty persistent cost pressures in some of West's key operating inputs, 
and notably chemicals and electricity, which make up about 25% of West's non-labor operating budget, are set to increase about 15% next year. We're also continuing to see uh, pretty extreme cost increases in county allocated costs and, and labor above our initial projections. So that's uh, called us to prioritize spending, reduce non-essential line items, and also continue incorporating a frictional vacancy assumption of 5%, uh, so that we can achieve the target of no more than 5% increases in the operating budget per year. That constraint ensures that we can also meet the target for 5% increases in our monthly rates. And so the proposed budget is um, including 5% increases in West's rates for wastewater treatment collection and surface water management, as well as an offsetting reduction in the legacy debt component for rate payers in late, rate zone two. And then the SBC charges or system development charge increases are based on an engineering news record construction cost index inflation for 2023 of 2.7%. Uh, 2022's was 7.2%. We didn't uh, base our adjustments on that percent last year. Um, so it has come down quite a bit. The next slide, please. In terms of spending for next year, uh, the budget includes $126.4 million in projected spending. That's an increase of about $29 million from the current year's budget, mostly due to an increase in capital spending for projects. Uh, so the increase in capital is $27.5 million, and that includes funding for important projects like the Tri-City Outfall, the Wyoming Pump Station in Force Main, Three Creeks, and the Regional INI Reduction Program. Operating expenses are set to increase 4.7%, with just over half allocated towards salaries and benefits for the labor. Uh, we use debt funding for capital projects, and that $13 million in budgeted debt payments uh, will cover the funding that we used for the Solid Family Project at Price City, as well as the MBR expansion from 2010, and ongoing projects including outfall. Next slide, please. Uh, West receives all of our revenue from uh, charges and fees. We don't get any general fund support. Revenues for next year are projected at $69.9 million, with most of that coming from monthly service charges and system development charges. So the balance to be able to afford the $126.4 million in spending is coming from reserves. Well, we're projecting to start uh, fiscal year 24-25 with $173 million in reserves that we've intentionally built over the last seven years and several years in anticipation of the projects in our capital plan. Uh, so as you can see there, we'll be directing $56.5 million of those reserves towards next year's budget. Next slide, please. Uh, Wes's rates are currently below the regional average. Uh, Wes's rates are in gray on this slide. Uh, we do kind of an analysis of, of regional rates every year with the proposed adjustments. West's $61.50 rate will increase to $62.70, and it will still likely be below the area average. So it's really important for us. It's one of our, our objectives to keep our rate increases uh, reasonable and predictable for our rate payers. So we target no more than a 5% increase annually and still um, provide funding for capital investment and ongoing operational costs. Next slide, please. And then lastly, the budget is a department-wide effort. So I wanted to take just a moment to recognize and thank everybody that's been involved. That includes the management team, our capital teams, both on the sewer side and surface water side, administrative support, including Sean, who does all the PDF bookmarking for our budget, Chris, who does a ton of heavy lifting with respect to the advisory committee, and our communications, GIS tech, policy analysts, and then the, the whole finance team, uh, and then our subset of the finance team, the budget group, which is Stacey Tran, Carla Atwood, and Craig Anderson. The budget is their primary focus during budget season. So just a huge thank you to everybody for all your work on this and getting for the home stretch. Thanks, that's all I got. All right, thank you, Aaron. Um, next up. Catherine is going to be sharing some exciting news and progress on developing a new records management system for Wes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks, Lauren. Um, you can go to the first slide. Um, so some of you have already seen this, so I will not go in super detail. Um, but basically, uh, as many of us know, the records um, organization at Wes um, leaves a little bit to be desired. So we are kind of, we're trying to overhaul what it looks like where it's stored. Um, and so um, just wanted to cover a couple goals that we have for this project. Um, we want Wes to have an efficient and effective records management 
system that results in the following um, a high level of level of visibility for West employees, consistent naming conventions, consolidation and removal of redundancies, meaning like not storing things in seven different places, um, the ability to transfer and share information throughout the department so we can avoid having seven different copies of them everywhere. Um, and then the other goal, of course, being that West employees are able to trust that all records are being maintained appropriately. I think that's one reason we, we end up storing them in multiple places is because we don't have a high level of trust in what... Um, what the system is. Um, so that includes on-time archiving of documents, providing efficiency when you're searching, you're not gonna find old documents, you're not gonna find you know, typo documents, stuff like that. Um, proactive annual reviews, that's something that I'm sort of spearheading and, and working on is making sure that we're reviewing documents annually, um, doing some proactive outreach on that. Um, and then better tracking of retention timelines. We have a lot of documents that can be shredded at this point. Um, and don't worry, we only shred when we know for sure. I've checked with management. Um, we're all good to go on that. Um, so next slide, Lauren. Um, so this is the project timeline we have. Um, it's a little squishy, but we're doing our best to keep it uh, on, on, on task. Um, so we were doing a lot of planning earlier in the year, um, including like information architecture, like how are we gonna build it out? What is that gonna look like? Um, inventory, making sure we know what we have. Um, we're currently in the execution phase. So I, I um, at this point, have met with many of the managers and stakeholders that that have um, opinions on records management and what, what documents are created. I have a list of every document that is created by Wes. Um, and um, so at this point, we are taking that information. I'm using the information that I got from the managers and stakeholders about what is most important, what needs to be searchable. Um, and I'm building, at this point, um, an outline of what it's going to look like in SharePoint, um, hopefully during the summer. Um, and then of course I, you can see there maintenance late summer. So that's just like, it has been built. Things are starting to go in there from like the point it's built forward. Um, and we're also gonna start looking at the backlog. And at the end of the summer, hopefully everything is going really great. Um, but at that point I'll be reaching out to the same managers and stakeholders that I spoke with earlier and maybe some other people too, um, to understand how it went. How did the project go? Um, what was left to be desired and what went really well. Um, so that next time we do something like this, we have a better idea of what is needed. Um, next slide, please. And then this is just, I feel like it's important to highlight wins. And so I just wanted to share this. I won't read all of them word for word, but basically I just wanted to share that we've shredded tons of documents. Um, we had a lot of 45 boxes, as you can see, um, of accounts payable records that were past retention, didn't need to be kept um, in a physical form anymore. Um, we had a party with the admin team where we all came in on a Friday and um, Stephanie and Sean organized the uh, alcove here at DSB. And so everything is all kind of tidy and looks nice. And we can now start scanning that stuff and getting it um, stored properly. And then also I created new policy procedure and SOP templates. There's a little bit more consistency with those now. Um, and I've started transferring old um, documents onto the new templates. And those will be coming to managers for approval soon. Um, I think that might be it. Uh, I don't know if there's another slide. That's it, Lauren. No, we're good. <laughs> so that's it. Thanks. All right. Thank you. So next up, uh, Kiko will be providing us an update on behalf of the green team. Thank you, Lauren. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Akiko Gates, and I am one of the green team co-chairs. We wanted to give you all some updates on what we are up to. Next slide, please. Today, I'm going to talk about leaders in sustainability certification, Valerie Roundup, and the Earth Day cleanup and weeding event that we just had last week. Next, please. Leaders in Sustainability is a Clackamas County program which provides some guidelines for organizations to see how sustainable they are and what they can do better. Next, please. For our size of an organization, in order to be certified at the gold level, we need to uh, at least uh, we need to have at least sixty practices checked out of ninety sustainable practices. This year, we were recertified at the gold level, and the certification is good for three years. Next, please. One of the things they mention is the no, yeah, <laughs> thank you. One of the things they mention is the employee training. I don't know how many of you actually read them, but we started sending out monthly echo challenges emails every month from the start of this year. 
If you haven't checked them out, please take a look at the email next time and go to the intranet link and you can find all the monthly challenges there. The green team members are writing them and providing great info. Next, please. They asked us to make a new sustainable goal and we made two goals. One is to create a sustainable purchasing policy because surprisingly the county doesn't have one and the other is to create a landscaping policy which will apply to uh, West properties. So those are currently in the works. Next, please. Battery Roundup. We did a couple rounds of battery roundups in, at DSB, Tri-City and Kellogg Creek in the past few years and collected over 200 pounds of batteries in total to recycle through Metro. This month, we took 90 pounds of batteries and 99% of it was one-time use alkaline batteries. So in order to reduce waste, we are working on switching that commonly used AA and AAA batteries to the rechargeable kind at all locations. It will be part of the sustainable purchasing policy that, that I just mentioned, but we want to work on this item very soon. By the way, Hoodland wasn't included because one of the green team members, Michael Hawkins, already uses rechargeable batteries at the Hoodland plant and they recycle batteries properly there. So they are very self-sufficient and yeah, so they are doing a great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hawkins. Um, yeah, we are ending the battery roundup now We um, because now you can recycle batteries at the curbside in Clackamas County. Next, please. So this Monday, April 22nd was Earth Day and April is Earth Month. The Green Team had our second annual Earth Day clean, uh, clean up and weed pool event at West Sound uh, Phillips Creek properties last week. Next, please. We had six green team members and six guest employees attend the event. And with two field op uh, ops crew members help, we removed 660 pounds of trash. As a comparison, last year, we removed 720 pounds of trash. Thank you again to those who took the time and participated in the event. I personally really like the malt bags that we use to collect trash this year to avoid purchasing brand new plastic bags, uh, plastic trash bags. So we are trying to reuse whatever we can to reduce waste. Next, please. Well, lastly, I wanted to mention that our other co-chair, Andrew Swanson, recently received one hundred grand for saplings from East Mount Oma Soil and Water Conservation District. And he planted them by uh, Rose Creek and Phillips Creek. I thought this work should be mentioned and recognized. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> okay, next please. Thank you. This is all I have today. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to reach out to one of us or email to west-greenteam at clackamas.us. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kiko, and everybody who contributes to the Green Team. And also just taking time to thank everyone who presented today so far. And we will end on a fun note with Galen, who is going to be sharing about his life outside of West. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Galen. I'm in the watershed protection uh, group here at West. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to kind of share some of my moments outside of West um, on my free time. I'm going to showcase some of my photography and some of my uh, recent trips that I've done. So next slide, please. So a little background on me. Um, I grew up in Davis, California, uh, in the Sacramento Valley. I went to a Spanish immersion school growing up, so I'm, I'm fluent in Spanish. Uh, college took me uh, up to Oregon State, and um, I studied environmental science. Um, during my time there, I uh, studied abroad in, in Chile, in South America, and got an uh, opportunity to go work with the Chilean Forest Service. So 
have some cool ties down to Patagonia and uh, Chile. Next slide. This past January, uh, I just went on a two and a half week backpacking trip uh, with my brother, my younger brother, uh, through uh, through Patagonia, both Chilean side and Argentina side. So this is a few photos from Torres National Park, Torres del Paine National Park in Chile. Um, I didn't include a, a map of where this is, but it's at the very tip of South America, close to Antarctica. Uh, we did a, a four or 48 mile backpacking trip over the course of three days. And you go through some beautiful uh, fjords and alpine and lakes. And uh, it was just beautiful. So um, that was the first week of my trip. Uh, next slide. So after that, went down across the border into Argentina, uh, visited uh, Los Glaciares National Park. Um, this is the Perito Moreno Glacier, which is actually a glacier that has not been receding uh, as much, if if at all, over the last uh, um, several decades. So it's it's pretty cool. You get to watch uh, the glacier kind of have and fall fall apart and we even went on a hiking tour through the through the glacier as you can see in one of those photos at the top um the we look like little ants crawling through the glaciers and so at the very end of the tour you get to grab some ice off the glacier and have a have a glass of whiskey um, and after that i went over to uh, a small town uh, called el chalten which is uh the photo on the right it's the uh, famous Patagonia clothing brand symbol. Uh, those mountains are the, the symbol that some of you might be wearing today. So um, next slide. Here is a trip I did um, a year or two ago. I went to Mexico during the winter, uh, went, visited Mexico City and the uh, most southern state Chiapas near the Guatemala border. Um, I in Mexico City, I took a really fun uh, hot air balloon tour sun, uh, uh, in, the, in the morning to watch the sunrise over the pyramids. Um, and then made my way down to Chiapas through multiple plane trips and buses and was able to see some really beautiful caves and rivers and uh, other temples down there. Uh, next slide. So, during my you know free time here in the Pacific Northwest, I love to go uh, backpacking in the summertime. Here's a few of my favorite, most you know recent trips that I've taken uh, and photos I've grabbed up there. Um, Oregon's got some beautiful or Oregon's got some beautiful places, uh, but Washington recently has been uh, been my go-to spot. So if you ever have any um, questions about where to go and good trips, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, Next slide, please. Another recent uh, trip that I've done uh, was a pack rafting trip, which is a ultralight, uh, ultralight whitewater kayak that you can hike up into the into the woods and through canyons, and it's a lot lighter than a, a fifty pound whitewater kayak. So um, this is the trip on the East Fork Humptulips River on the Olympic National Forest. Uh, it was about a eight hour paddle through remote canyons. Uh, surrounded by old growth logging roads, um, or the, the road, the forest around the old growth was being logged, so it was kind of uh, a little paradise inside of there. Lots of wood, um, lots of nav navigating and safety and route finding. Um, next slide. And uh, to continue along with the water sports, uh, I spent a lot of my free time kayaking and rafting. Uh, I guide friends through. Uh, you know, uh, for their first time on rivers. So recently that we went this past summer on the Deschutes River in Oregon, uh, three days, uh, got to bring a bunch of new friends that had never been before. So I love to share that experience with people. Um, and here's some other photos just from other, tr you know, local rivers around the area. Um, and yeah, if you ever uh, are into whitewater kayaking or rafting or any other outdoor sports. Uh, I would love to chat some more and uh, help you plan your next trip or share some fun stories. And I think that I think it might be all I have today.
Galen, your pictures are incredible. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Ron, you got a question or is that a clap? No, that's a clap. But uh, while I unmuted, yeah, your pictures are awesome. Thanks for taking time to share that with us. All right. Thank you. With that, we will have Greg close the meeting. All right. Yeah, that was fantastic, Galen. And your photographs are just stunning. Uh, I've been, thankfully, not well to the many of the the places up in Washington. I've backpacked up there a million years ago, and yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, I want to thank Chris uh, and Lauren and who, all the others that did uh, either orchestrated this today or or did the presentations. Um, I'm just really proud of the work that you're all doing. I'm grateful to be here, um, and and it yeah, and especially you know. Erin kind of blew through, not blew through, she painted the picture of our financial health, but it, it really is remarkable, uh, the work that we've done over the past seven years or so. Um, I like to tell people that we know what we need to build, when we need to build it, and how we're going to pay for it. And there's so many utilities across the, the state, even in Clackamas County, uh, that just aren't able to say that. And um, I just feel super fortunate. Um, and it's because of all of you. Um, so thank you and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.